at 4. It's hard to believe that what happened happened. It went from just such a great time and great to see them and to be with them. and Literally overnight changed. In August, at least 97 people died after a wildfire ripped through Maui. Among those killed, Boise woman Lori Allen who moved to Lahaina with her husband, Perry, more than 10 years ago. Their friends, Jason and Michelle, who are also from Boise, were visiting them when that tragedy struck. I sat down with them as they shared what those moments on the island were like and how they've been coping since losing their friend. You know, we had such a great time beforehand with them, hiking, going to dinner, we met them at the beach. And in a matter of minutes, moments like this one captured in a photograph are now just memories. And it was two months ago, Sunday, that this all happened and it's still so hard, so hard. Jason and Michelle Brixey of Boise were visiting their friends, Perry and Lori Allen, in August when the fire broke out in Lahaina. The Brixies say the first sign that anything was wrong was when the power went out. Then came the strong wind. We went down to Safeway and it was like, Everybody was there. They tried to go to the next town, but the roads were blocked off, so they went back to their hotel room. Then I looked up on the hill and I saw a fire, and Laurie and Perry lived right up on that hill, about a mile away from where we were staying on Front Street. So I um, called Laurie and said, you know, the fire looks really close to your place. Um, do you need to come here? And she said, yeah, I'm putting my stuff in the car right now. 15 minutes later, Michelle says she texted Lori to see if she was still on her way. She said, the fire's blocking the road. I'm going to have to head up north. And I said, OK, so you're going to the evacuation point, because I think they were evacuating everybody to the high school that was up near there. She said yes. And that was the last time she heard from Lori that day. And I looked out the window with him, and it was a wall of fire right outside our hotel. We went and grabbed our luggage and ran down the flights of stairs and our car was actually underneath the buildings that were on fire. The worst thing was when we started hearing all the explosions, when it would hit a gas station or vehicles, that was scary. It was like a war zone. It took them almost four hours to drive what would normally take 30 to 40 minutes. It was just a, so chaotic that nobody knew what was going on. We never heard fire vehicles going to put the fire out. They, along with others, stayed the night in their car in the parking lot of a Walmart. The next morning, Perry called Jason and said Lori had been caught in the fire and was burned. She was trying to help her neighbor. They were kind of in denial, even though the house was burning, and she was making them get in the car. And then a tree blocked the road, and then the police um, directed them another way into the smoke and fire instead of she could see blue skies behind him. So she went that way, couldn't see, and Perry was actually on the phone with her why this was happening. So she just told him, all I can see is black. And he was begging her a long time to just leave. They say that was the type of person Lori was, always helping people. She had the biggest heart. And when they found her, the only thing she could say was her husband's names and his phone number so they could get a hold of him. An ambulance took her across the island to the airport. She was then flown to a burn center on Oahu. Her husband, Perry, was at work on the other side of the island. And they called him and said, we think we have your wife. Lori was in the hospital for 53 days before she passed away. She was burned on over 75% of her yeah, body, yeah. Um, so it was really bad. In the first couple of weeks, she was pretty co you know, coherent and could talk. She told the story about what happened. Gradually, she just you know, kind of deteriorated. And her internal organs had started to shut down. Perry's mindset was always that she would recover. I mean, mm -hmm. it wasn't till the very end, I think, that he finally accepted yeah. you know, what, was, what was happening. And he was there by her side the entire time. He has nothing to go back to on Maui, so which is sad because nobody can find housing. So he's just right now concentrating, um, grieving because it's been nonstop for him. She should be safe. She should be here today. She should be there today and walking around and everything, but she was just directed the wrong way. They went 
they mm -hmm. directed them in basically into the fire instead of out of the wide open road where she saw the blue sky. Michelle and Lori have been friends for 20 years. One a Vandals fan, the other a Broncos fan. And on the day Lori took her final breath, Michelle says she saw this. And it was the biggest blue and orange sunset ever. And I was crying and laughing, saying, oh my gosh, one last dig from Lori with her Broncos. It was so, it was just something, I just thought it was a message from her. You know, she's in a better place. She's not suffering, you know, and um, she was a hero. The couple tells me there were no sirens or warnings as to what was happening. Jason says when he turned the radio on for updates, he heard Hawaiian music playing, and hopefully those in charge can learn from this tragedy. They also say that woman and son who Lori was trying to help also died in the fire. Now, there is a GoFundMe to help Perry, and we'll have a link to that in this story at KTVB.com.